Captain. Incoming message. It was the dawn of the third age of mankind. Groovy. Hi ho. Uh, this is me, Kermit the Frog. Hello there. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Not a great plan. Program complete. Enter when ready. Let's see what's out there. Engage. Hey there, we're those sci-fi guys. This is that those sci-fi guys show. Just two working dudes, different jobs, different lives, but a whole lot of love for science fiction and the fun that comes with. We are your hosts. And there's actually a third wheel here tonight. We'll find out if you are. Right. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> How are you, DT? I'm DT Kevin, and I loved watching you struggle to get through that intro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. I don't. I used to write them down. This when this was more polished <laughs> and we cared. <laughs> I used to write down my intro, my new intro every week, but uh, I kind of stopped and was like, "Ah, eh, you can, you can, you 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 can figure something out on the fly." No, no, I can't, and it, it's been very evident lately. So, <laughs> so you're you're better with script than on improv. Got it? <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Yes, and. We have a special guest with us today, my very own bro, Ham Gaming, Uh, Mm -hmm. actually my younger brother, uh, Bro Ham Gaming, Uh, we thought would be a very special addition for a very special night to just talk about his impressions. He did not grow up as a sci-fi fan necessarily. He grew up in a household with an older brother that was a huge sci-fi fan. He was more into sports and chicks and, well, I liked chicks too, but you figured out (laughs) sports were the better way to do it. So, (laughs) and not, not, not the deeper, not the deeper evolutionary thought of the, the ethical quandary of uh, whether you should interfere with a pre-warp civilization anyway, which is gaming. please feel welcome. I don't even have applause. I should have had applause. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Pleasure to be here. We're glad uh, to have you, there. man. Yeah. Hello uh, there. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did more of the uh, <laughs> did more of the sports than I did watching the sci-fi growing up. But, uh, yeah. I wish you weren't a liar. <laughs> I, well, I mean, when I grew up with you. <laughs> that, that's like his favorite. Yeah. That's, 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 that's my favorite. favorite. It's a good one. It is my favorite. So. It fits. It fits. Anyway, so thank you for coming on, Broham. I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, Broham, you got your name from a uh, Doug Benson. Uh, no. Uh, no? No, no, I, okay. I, uh, I got a nine-year-old son, and I would always, <laughs> oh, I would okay. always call him. I would always call him my little Broham. I would be like, Broham, come here. Like uh, we, when we play golf, or we would play video games, or we'd go outside and throw the football or whatever. Uh, he was my little broham. So that's when, when everything shut down in the world and I was playing video games because there's nothing else to do. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, I, I was in the hospital, so that was something to do. I don't recommend it, but I, yeah, it was no. something to do. <laughs> we get well, it. You had COVID. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, where's the violin sound effect? Do we have one of those? No? Okay. We, we, uh, we don't. We don't. No! <laughs> oh, man. Somehow you got to get the Keanu clip of him just shooting in the air in point break. You know? Over the line! Oh, damn. I love that one. <laughs> oh, man. No, but it's wild uh, being able to do this with you guys after growing up with both of you and watching you both be those sci-fi guys. But it was more like those sci-fi children. Those sci-fi children and the weirdos that that walk together. (laughs) And while we were that, I also played a lot of sports with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did did play a lot of sports in the neighborhood together. That's for sure. That's for sure. I yeah. found the middle ground between the two brothers. <laughs> uh, you did. You did. <laughs> Most people did. 
<laughs> oh, oh we, yeah. We're, we're likable. I mean, I don't know about you now, are, but we were. Likeable. You know? I'm not very likable. I'm pretty antisocial, but that's well. Yeah, you moved so. three thousand miles away. It's tough to like you anymore. And, and no one knows me here, and I'm pretty cool with it. So <laughs> you see, the key to being liked is go away for a long time. Then they have time to miss you. And you remember the good things. Yeah, that's true. And then just don't make any new mistakes when you get back. So uh, just, just remember, it's, it's, no, it's minimal eye contact. Just walk by, walk by head down. Just, you yeah, know. just walk by. Yeah, every now and then. Oh, hey, 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 you know, that's how you do it. Yeah, well, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, tell you know, us duck and cover. Yourself. So, about, yeah, please. Our, our audience knows about me and, and DT over here. You're the other Mac, but for purposes of delineation, you're Broham. Yeah. Just, uh, tell us, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, your your history i mean we grew up together so i know but let the yeah others know. yeah well you know growing up together we were uh polar opposites let's be honest you know we were more <laughs> into the sci-fi and the, the books and the reading and the the stars and the planets and i was more like uh where are the girls and is there something <laughs> i can break and are there other guys that will break stuff with me you know <laughs> That's more of what my speed was. And, and uh, you know, our, our father was uh, more of the let's break stuff and, and uh, you know, and let's play football. And, and apologize and, later for it. Well, I mean. <laughs> Rather than ask permission. <laughs> well, it's, you know, depends on how fast you are. Can you get away? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's that, too. Uh, yeah. I grew up with both of you. Speed wasn't exactly in your wheelhouse. Uh, hey, you know, you just had to be faster than one other guy. That's it. You know? <laughs> for you, it was usually your brother. Well, yeah, you know, if not, you trip them and then you just keep yeah, going. Well, or, or you jump just or I just jump off the path. There, right, there it right. Is. So, <laughs> right. uh, you know, but uh, growing up with you was uh, lots of lots of sci fi. It was always, you know, uh, the Reader's Digest books to get the cover of the latest. I think it was Star Trek and T- TV, TV guy, Ooh, TV guy, TV nice Reader's cool. Digest is way different. Cool. But yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, seeing how into it you were, it, there was a, a little part of me that was jealous because I never found that. I always, yes, I think the thing I, I could closely relate to my obsession would, would be golf, would be my, my the, the background of how I'm sitting here. You know, <laughs> it's the only thing I've ever obsessed with to where I've become at a level of that I can beat everyone I play against, you know, and, and I've, I've kind of reaped some benefits from golf over the years and and uh that was been my that was my obsession as a kid and i could never understand why no one else liked it and i'm sure you couldn't understand why i was like wow that's i'm I'm good i don't have time i don't understand i'm i don't want to play you know so uh but i would get dragged to the star trek whatever and and you'd have it on tv and and you're the older child so i had no say dad was like we'll watch that that's fine and uh you know <laughs> So I, there I'd be forced to watch it. That I remember where you were forced to watch it with our father, and that was the Star Trek Voyager premiere episode on January third, nineteen ninety five. Oh, I, mean, I mean, who, who? I mean, what time was it? <laughs> you know, it, was, it was the beginning of the Paramount Network, so it was at eight p.m. And it was a two-hour oh, yeah. ep- episode, you know. and when at the very end of the episode, when some members of the Voyager crew were climbing out of the ground to escape the Ocompan village. Uh, you started singing zombie, zombie, <laughs> zombie, <laughs> and I was like, "Shut up!" And you're like, "Zombie," and, and then Dad's like, "Shut up!" <laughs> yeah, I guess I was pretty annoying when I didn't want to do what was going on. You know, I, I think I, it's, that's the human condition. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I. It was, you know, as we've grown up and, and you, you know, we, our past started to separate as we get into teenagers and all that other stuff in life. The less time I spent with you, I found myself kind of gravitating more towards the weird sci-fi stuff because it reminded me of you and times we spent together. But also like it was something to talk to you about when we got to talk, to you know, it was. Yeah, I knew God forbid I actually tried to learn golf and, and be a considerate older brother. Ah, uh, well, let's put oh, it this come way. On. You know? We could have always talked Tiger Woods, but then that went south. 
<laughs> <laughs> that was a good 10 years after that, though. So. Yeah, it was a long it time after that. It would be fine that. at that time. <laughs> at that time, we could have bonded on that. It was like, oh, early Tiger. <laughs> early Tiger was everywhere, man. He was he was I, it. I met him. I, you know, I met Tiger. I drove him from the players' parking lot to the first tee of the Deutsche Bank tournament. Broken man, right? Before, yeah, before everything went down, (laughs) he was winning everything. Then it was wild. Like I don't have to meet anybody else in sports. I'm good. Yeah, he'd be like, "You want to meet Big Poppy?" I'm like, "Why?" How about Tom Brady? Huh? No, I'm good. What? Really? I would meet. I would have not met Poppy in a heartbeat. (laughs) Uh, I'm, I met Tiger Woods, man. I'm good. That he talked to me while I was driving him, and it was hard not to drive off the uh, the little bridge over the pond as you I was bringing him to the to first eye team. contact with him. I was driving. I didn't make eye contact. If I did, he'd probably been like, "Hey, can you face forward?" <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, he talked to me first. I did. I I follow the rules. I grew up on. You know, I played golf at a country club. I understand who to talk to and who not. You know, but uh, with when it comes Ironically, to if it, if he had started golfing 10 years earlier, he, he wouldn't have been allowed to talk to anybody either at most country clubs. <laughs> 1990, 19, uh, 1980. <laughs> come on, man. Well, yeah, yeah. When did, what was it, 96? Six? I can't remember. What 96, he from. came onto the scene. He left Stanford yeah. after one year. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it would have been like 1980, 1975. Well, he I was mean, playing, but damn, he was just, dude. He's playing close to when the sun set. You know what I mean? In 1999, he still couldn't play on certain golf courses. I know. It's I'm, you know, it's do it's, the future math. We talked about this, DT. Do the future math on this, people. <laughs> like, what in the hell? Like people do future math. I know. <laughs> people don't do present math. <laughs> exactly. No, they can't. Yeah. I have a hard enough time to, helping my kid with math. In the, there's not enough people in the room to take off their shoes and use their toes, you know? No, there is not. There is not. Hurts. Yeah, but I, I get where you're coming from, man. You know, the 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 the, the distance, but you, you you guys found things to kind of connect. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, no, it's uh, a lot of it uh, was just uh, that reminder that, OK, you know, if he's far away, at least I can, you know, talk, I can shoot him. Uh, well, I don't know. At that time, it would be like write him a letter. You know? <laughs> instant message. Like an instant message. Yeah, an AOL instant, an AOL message. instant message, you know. So I don't, you don't think you and I ever AOL instant messaged each other at all. No, no. We would just talk on did. the phone. We would talk yeah. on the phone. Oh, I mean, I, when I had when you, pretty long distance my 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 freshman it was, year. It was two thousand and one. Like I I still was you know could be easily be not be found <laughs> yeah. for days on it. <laughs> you know, there, there was GPS some, tracking me. It was it was the good old days. <laughs> it's some, it, sometimes I actually miss those times where it's like you you'd come home to a phone message like they couldn't reach you while you were yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't now, even have a cell phone through college. Now, uh, it just reminds me of every time something new comes out, I think of of uh, PS over there uh, going, see, we're yeah. going to have that one day. Look, we'll have that on Star. See that? He's See that flat thing he's using his finger on? We're going to have those one day. And now, yeah. you know, my nine-year-old's got an iPad that can do more than <laughs> anything I've had when I was a kid. All right. I'll I'll freak you out. Uh, keep going. I, I'm gonna bring something up. Bring, on. bring back something. <laughs> oh, you believe know? me. Don't worry. Um, the, the, you want a YouTube? You want a YouTube strike? I don't want one. Our last video almost got a bunch of strikes on it. Oh, got a whole man. lot of copyright blocks on it. That's for sure. <laughs> well, well, DT. I think the the one sci-fi that really brought me close, or to really really enjoying it, was it was probably Battlestar Galactica. I had oh, never okay, heard so, of. It. I had never I, heard of it. I, okay, so here's the thing about Battlestar Galactica. I introduced that to you in 2009. Right. But I want to... <laughs> right as it was we ending. Can, yeah, exactly. we can We can go back to that. It was after it ended. It was, like, right after. It was... Oh, okay. um, it ended in March of 2009. You came out in April. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> April of 2009. <laughs> and I st- you started playing... You started playing all along the watchtower on my computer. And I'm like, dude, 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 hold on, 
Hold on. We had a few beverages. Um, oh, a few. <laughs> you, you need to watch this. You need to watch this. So I showed him the ending scene of Battlestar Galactica where they played all along the Watchtower and all the, the different things. And I'm like, wait a minute. None of this makes sense. Let's start at the beginning of this episode. Yeah. And then we started. And I'm like, wait, none of this makes sense. Let's start at this one. And then I'm like, no, none of this makes sense. Well, let's start at the pilot. So I started the pilot. We started the pilot at like 1 a.m. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or the, the you know the big movie. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was awesome. It was awesome. You know. It, it was. I it was, was I was I was I was blown away by it, and uh, you know I hadn't really I don't know I'd never really connected with any of it before. I was always like, well, yeah, it's computers and it's new technology and it's blah 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 stuff I can't do. So I'm like, I'm more of a, we'll put it in my hands. If I can do this, I'm, I'll be interested in it. And that's what golf was to me and sports and a okay. camaraderie. And, and, you know, so I didn't realize the, until I actually got to go to a comic con later oh, on in my adult yeah. life, I didn't realize how <laughs> like cool it actually was. I mean, I liked comic books. I was never really super into it, but I had a couple and I understood sure. and I liked Spider-Man and all that other crazy stuff. But now right. it's like. I don't know. It's it's my kid watches more sci-fi than anything I ever watched, and he digs it and knows stuff. And he's like, and he's wants comic books now and all this other. Shit. And I'm just like, wow, it, it just blows me away where it's come. You know what's messed up? You've been to a comic con more than I have. I've not I've not been to one. Yeah, not been to one. And here's <laughs> what I was talking about that'll blow your mind. Oh, damn. AT&T commercial? Was this filmed on an Android? From thousands of miles away. Tom Selleck. Have Still you ever borrowed a book? I heard the mustache. From thousands of miles away. <laughs> across the country. <laughs> without stopping for directions. Across the country without stopping for directions. Oh, God. Or is that someone a fax? Look at that, a fax. From the beach, <laughs> you will. You will. And the company that'll bring but it to you. The difference AT now is you can do it from your toilet. Wait, there's one more. <laughs> Have you ever paid a toll without slowing down? <laughs> <laughs> Bought concert tickets from a cash machine. From a cash machine. We literally do all this now. Yes, yeah. yes we do. The company that'll bring it to you, AT and T. It, it took 10 years. Have you ever watched the movie That's you wanted fun. to? No, no. The minute you wanted to. There you go. The, the TV <laughs> show, The Minute You Wanted talking To. talking about getting copyrights. <laughs> oh, come on. That's an advertisement. That's different. <laughs> Not only that, it's outdated. Dude, AT&T has outlasted almost every other phone <laughs> carrier. It's the original. Yeah, MCI, gone. 9X, gone. Singular. AT&T. It crushed <laughs> Bell. It crushed the guy, the founder of the telephone. <coughs> okay, just remember that. Don't fuck with well, They AT bought <laughs> Bell. They bought Bell. <laughs> I know. That's my well. point. Yeah. <laughs> it's not called <laughs> Bell. It's called AT&T. Yes, that is true. And they had Ma Bell Labs or whatever it yeah. was. So, <laughs> man, what did I think you boys were were, uh, were crazy as kids? I'm like, there's so much better stuff to be doing than watching that and 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 dreaming. You, you know, now I now all I do is dream. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. That's what sci-fi did to us. It it, it taught us to dream yeah. more. And, and, you know, you, you were caught, you got caught in Battlestar Galactica that was actually co-created by Ronald D. Moore, who was the co you know, co-producer for D Space Nine. And I think the, I think D Space Nine was the first Star Trek that you actually I appreciated. I pro yeah, I watched it. I watched it. Uh, it was I weird. caught you. Interesting. I caught you because the episode when Worf marries Jadzia... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. When Odo is arguing with Kira, and they've got a bunch of sexual t tension between each other, and then yeah, Odo know, goes, I was a kid. maybe I should kiss you. And, and and Kira goes, well, maybe you should. And he's like, is that an invitation? She goes, yeah, it is. Okay. And then they kiss, and well, I heard from the basement. They, they, 
the argument got consent in it. I it got that. consent. It did. It did. It did. And, and, and I heard from the basement suddenly, whoa! <laughs> and then, so he, 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 and I'm like, that son of a bitch is watching this thing too. <laughs> well, you know. I mean, it was, a, it was a nondescript season six episode. Like, was it season six? Uh, his way. Season six. Yeah, it was season six. Yes, thank you. I, I wouldn't know, I know the name, but that's where that's where you come in. So <laughs> it's a gift. Yeah, no, I, I do remember quite a bit uh, of not. I mean, I can't name it like you guys do for for Christ's sake. Good Lord. Sad, I mean, but that's sad, all you guys. Sad waste of childhood. Well, that's actually, no, I feel like your memory is way better than mine. You know, like, well, especially uh, P.S. The guy can pull dates and times and, and the weather and. Uh, um, you know, I was like, it's yeah. all about the filing system. It's, it's just too. how my filing system works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and ask me, you know, some sort of DOT regulation I have to work, deal with for work at, right now. And I could, probably couldn't tell you that. Well, but I could probably you, tell you what that's that, what your phone, what the name of the what actor sci-fi for this phones for. So you can look it up. I know. Right. <laughs> Where you can send a fax from the beach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Instead of from the toilet, you know. <laughs> Which is where most people probably send them from now. <laughs> I, I text more in the bathroom than I do anywhere else. Oh, I didn't need to know that. Well, I mean, hey, it texts you a lot. You know? it, it is appropriate use of your time. Exactly. A multitasking. <laughs> exactly. You know, by the way, I'm, DT, you need to get an Instagram account. Just because you're the, the amount of videos that you're missing out on that I can send you. That you would appreciate, and and, I, and, 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 and Broham Gaming, yeah, he can send yeah. a lot of stuff to you too. And you I would find, appreciate there's, it. There's good stuff. I'm you don't need to. You don't go, need to follow down, anyone. You just need to follow I us. Down, I go down the internet rabbit hole too much as it is, so I, I work. I That's work. part of life. That's just yeah, part of life. Yeah, exactly. I agree. I agree. Just get you the know? get the damn Instagram account. It doesn't cost anything. <laughs> Except your soul. Oh, we yeah. traded that in a long time. Yeah, ago. that was gone. That was gone a yeah. long time ago. Yeah, yeah. true. <laughs> that's part of what that's what technology takes. Parts of your soul in order. You want your computer to go faster? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> now Here's you can have this soul. computer for fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Or you give me most of your soul, and it'll only cost you eight hundred. So <laughs> for the next okay. years, Wh- whoever I have to give my soul to, there's IOUs in place. The army has most of it. <laughs> That's true. <Yeah. laughs> until until you're left. completely an invalid. <laughs> don't laugh. I'm not far away. I know you're not. <laughs> so, um, oh, anyway, dang. getting back to more serious topics. Do you, <laughs> hey, bro, I got to yep. tell you, I... Battlestar was was definitely one that I had a lot of friends who weren't huge sci-fi fans who who got in. Okay. In fact, I see leading up to the, the the series finale, I want to say it was like on sci-fi or something. They had like the cultural impact of Battlestar, and they had interviews with like celebrities who were huge Battlestar fans. You know, everyone from like Brad Paisley to jesse l martin and and just all sorts of random people from different walks of life who you were like sci- big sci-fi fan is no oh but they like battlestar oh okay you know, I don't it, it's know kind what, of, I, I don't know what it was about it that that started changing the tide for me i think i just uh i, I don't know i related to I thought it was cool that it was a station as opposed to travel. Like I felt it was more believable to be in a, in, in one area. Battlestar? Than, yeah. Wasn't it, uh, didn't, wasn't it, was the, no, not Battlestar, uh, Deep Space Nine. When I, I'm thinking oh, well, of Star yeah, Trek. Deep Space. Yeah. Sorry, I was yeah, thinking no. of Star Trek for a minute, but, uh, the Deep Space Nine, I thought was way different. Yeah. Battlestar, I thought was crazy just because of the, uh, the shockingness of how fast you could be wiped off the planet yeah and you know i think that has to do i mean look how many zombie apocalypse movies or dystopian future movies like almost every yeah. version of the future now is shitty yeah okay and this like was the this only was, time uh, the first time it introduced like ai as being something very very some very very scary 
outside of the Terminator, this right. was the only other mm-hmm. thing that really seemed to dive into it. You're right. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where it is. I think some you might have had some people who like Terminator, some people who kind of like these dystopian futures, and you put a little more sci, a little bit more sci-fi twist, mm-hmm. but it's still grounded. They're not running into aliens of the week. Right. They're humans. They're running into human problems. And to mm-hmm. be honest with you, outside of the the uh, extra, you know, the 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 huge starships, most of their technology wasn't any different than ours. No, yeah, that's what uh, struck you know when I when we first watched uh, the in, the intro to the whole uh, Battlestar that first that long movie whatever the mini it was series, the, yeah, yeah the miniseries that's what blew me away when you're looking at the computers you're like well my my desktop's faster than that right now and this is supposed to be the future and it was like a basic future but they were really good at life support yeah yeah <laughs> right. Know? That's what blew me away. That's what it almost it felt like. Like, damn, the future is master life support. We can make it. We'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, but you have to lose the corners of your paper. <laughs> well, that's just science right there. Yeah, you got to save. <laughs> it's, 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 so, it's, so, it's so ridiculous. The yeah. paper was so ridiculous. <laughs> but that's what it was awesome. That made it awesome. It was just... Oh, that and the, just the subtle changes of the vocabulary, like fracking, like th- that's fracking amazing, like that's that's fracked up. Yeah. Like it, it, it was, it was a great away. way to yeah, it was, it was a great, a great way, way to get past the system. censors. Yeah. You just yeah, it great. curse words. Yeah, cheat the system. I'm like, man, I never thought you could do that. Talk about like artistic freedom. Uh, what was, was the was show? Great. What was the show where with Ben Browder, Farscape? For- they had they had a swear called Frell. Frelling, yeah, it wasn't as satisfying to. to okay, to, yeah, no, I, I feel like <laughs> it Frack doesn't have a had a nice little. Most vulgarity has hard sounds to it. Yeah, 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 and it, you so, know the best vulgarity does anyway. behind it. Yeah, exactly, the ones that count. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I I gotta tell you, one of the things that I did like about Battlestar was I mean it, it there was there was enough hope like this gl- distant glimmer but but it, it hit hard and I mean basically it was for the most part close to a military dictatorship um, the military kind of had to control things because there was very little sy- system in place they're literally on all whatever there was no infrastructure yeah. So was no everything was compartmentalized. Like, oh, when you wipe out as many things that got wiped out, right? There was when, less than forty thousand humans left. Yeah. Yes. I mean, jumping every hour—that was crazy. And, and even still, they were getting minutes. each other down. Yeah. I thought, like, I felt like I was sweating during that whole thing. Every time they yeah. jumped, I'm like, oh. Thirty-three minutes, right? That yeah. was that was a great episode, and you're on your seat of your pants oh, the whole episode, yeah, because they they it's have the good, countdown clock. Yeah, yeah, and I watched that with you, right? P.S. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the fun part about sci-fi shows. Just real quick, uh, history. Usually, sci-fi shows the pilot is the most expensive thing. They have to build all the sets. They have to build all the uniforms. Make them all. <laughs> You know, they have to do all that design stuff. That's what takes all the money. And then they, they blow it out with all these special effects to try to keep the eyes on it. And then the first real episode of the series is usually a bit of a, a bottle show where they don't have any new sets. They don't show a lot of new effects. They just um, try to recycle as much as they can. What Battlestar, it, usually it's a big letdown. Like the second episode <laughs> of Star Trek: The Next Generation, they all they just reused a, a a script from the original series called The Naked Now, or okay. was it The Naked Time, and where where they all got infected with a virus where they all wanted a bone. I mean, <laughs> there's worse viruses. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we learned that we learned that Commander Data was fully anatomically correct and fully functional. That's what he said. I, I could have gone without it. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's what we got from the first true episode of TNG, Battlestar Galactica. 
they had an edge of your seat bottle show. Yeah. With, I mean, that if that doesn't exemplify fantastic writing to the nth degree, I don't know what would. And it was just a me, just uh, you know, a, a oh, yeah, it locked can... it locked me in. I I remember I down. I think I burned every single copy I could to bring home and 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 watch. Just I I wouldn't stop until it was over. It was insane. You know, and when you start, and, and, and it was addictive, too, because that one was like the drug, right? Yeah. You got the taste from the miniseries, and you're like, this looks like this would be a pretty cool show if they pick it up. Because it was like another year before the series came out. Oh, wow. After, after yeah, the Yeah, it was. See, that's well, it was like part six of months a... or something. It was, a, it, was a, it was a long time. Yeah. Uh, so you, you end up, and then you, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember... And then you're just literally riveted for the whole episode. And they finally and the get fun- free of of how they're being tracked. But now you're just invested. You're like, what comes next? And it just <laughs> keeps rolling. And since it was serialized, you had to see the next episode. But it was it was a serialization that was also episodic. It was episodic enough that if you missed one of the bottle episodes you might be okay yeah <laughs> well and that series came out what there was dvr and everything when that series was out right dvr just started coming out okay because that changed the game i mean i feel like if you that series was so complex at times like if you missed two episodes and you couldn't record it or, or play it back you're gonna miss a lot <laughs> the, and the then advantage on demand came out oh. like Three three years after the premiere of of Battlestar, so you could catch up on a lot of stuff too. Okay. What what this also did was because Battlestar, it wasn't like all right, every October we're going to get a full season of Battlestar. Sometimes they were a little off. It, it it usually ended up being a little more than a year before the next one came out. So by that time, the DVDs would have been out. Okay. And you yes. could binge the whole <clears throat> season. Leading up to season two or season three or yeah. season two point five when they started splitting them in half. Yeah, they started splitting them so you could so that they could like make more money off of the DVD just, selection. It, it was just to milk. It. it was just <laughs> of milk. Course. Yeah, I mean Look every everybody does that now, but yeah. that that it kind of worked. I mean, I I ended up missing part of the back half of season one due to some training requirements, and I ended up getting the season on bootleg dvd and my first tour in iraq so i binge watched it and i was you know I, I think season two had since come out i watched that and then i was talking with uh, some co-workers and they're kicking around shows and it was like oh yeah i can't wait for the new seat as a battlestar i'm like whoa wait you're in and then a couple then he had some people he knew burn him like the first three episodes of the next season and and mail it to him in Iraq. And we we cut we we got together and, and watched like the first three episodes, which we hadn't we didn't we weren't able to get. Right. Uh, right. And that was that was the, the occupation of New Caprica. So here we are in Baghdad oh, in two thousand and six. Yeah. The, the <laughs> occupation of New Caprica where they're we're rooting for the people who are the suicide bombers and yeah. who are yeah. the insurgents. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, Ugh. You're this like, doesn't sit we're right. Around, we're like, this, this is weird. Yeah. yeah. The episode was great. Oh yeah, down. the episode was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of don't want to go to work tomorrow now. <laughs> it was tough shit. I was at I was at work. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Duty, I was at work. <laughs> Man, the battle star was then, just, so. it, it was just so engaging that I could almost divest myself from where I was at to watch this show. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I think that's one of the things I started to connect with was like how, how much you can forget your entire surroundings while you're watching it and just kind of almost dive into it in a sense. It's a nice escape. Good writing, strong storytelling, uh, great suspense. cast. Yeah. Made you want well, more. Yeah. And it had mostly good payoff. Mostly, there are a couple, I, a couple 
shoestrings that weren't tied, but <laughs> maybe quite didn't stick the landing the way we thought. Didn't go full Game of Thrones, but it left a few heads. <laughs> left a few, yeah. Like, oh, so Starbuck was an angel this whole time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, oh. or since she died, like yeah. she was okay. an angel with a filthy soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Keep from Home Alone, gene, you filthy animal. <laughs> Oh, that's fair. Oh, I goodness. like that. <laughs> uh, I, but she was great, and now Katie Sackhoff is like, it, she's like the the modern sci-fi day like sci-fi. Yeah, she's like the sci-fi queen. Oh, she's yeah. By the way, do you remember all the outrage that 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 spawned when it was announced that Starbuck was going to be gender swapped? Like all that nerd rage. Do you remember all that? Yeah, it from was like, all. Five there were none. There was none. Star fans. <laughs> there was none. There was no rage. There was no rage. None. <laughs> I, I remember hearing from a couple of Battlestar original Battlestar fans who were a little grumpy about it, but let's just say Katie Sackhoff won people over pretty damn fast. <laughs> it was a good that choice. pilot episode. I it's saw her, choice. and and I was never attracted to her in that show. But but I can understand why people would be, but I just saw her and I'm like, wow, she's got more testosterone than I do like in that in that pilot, in that pilot. I mean, like, I'm like, wow. And I, I'm in my peak. I, I'm 23 years old. <laughs> you know, I'm young, young, dumb and, you know, that and it just. It, yeah, I, I'd want to go into a. I was intimidated a by with, her. With her Starbuck at my side. <laughs> Right, right. Oh yeah. I don't you know want, if I want to fight somebody. Her. No, yeah, but you'd just, want her to throw down with. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Yeah, by your side. Yeah. Or or yeah. you follow her. I yeah. mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'd probably follow her. I mean, I was invested <laughs> in the character, but it was hard for me to to also not appreciate how beautiful Katie Sackhoff is. I mean, I mean it, it's know. true, but man, she owned that role. She kicked ass, oh, she yeah. had gravitas, she had humor. And yeah. then she kicked a lot of ass. Yeah, it was believable. If 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 I drank as much as she did on that show, I would have been thrown out of the army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't have any choice. They had to keep the Viper pilots they had. <laughs> I mean, you know, every flight was uh, a 50-50 shot of coming back for a while. Well, that, that but that was also the original. Like, that was Dirk Benedict's character. That was Starbuck from the 70s. He was a cigar smoking, whiskey drinking yeah, I guess womanizer, and she was a whiskey drinking, cigar smoking. She didn't. Uh, she went after whoever she, she wanted yeah, to go she after. Used, she used the, the male the male figure for her uh, for her whatever for her pleasure and amusement. That's Damn for right. sure. I feel like they played tribute to the character. They just like you said did the gender swap, but I think it was uh, you know every now and then who doesn't want to be pushed around? I'm just throwing it out there. What? The weird world. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a strong character that fit really well for the show. And uh, I dug it. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, the, 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 they didn't have, like, I, I wouldn't say that they had characters who were, I mean, none of their characters were really, you know, one-dimensional. Uh, at least the ones you saw a lot of. They were, they all had uh, you know, foibles, and they they all had faults, but they were all extremely human, and I think that's one of the reasons why it was riveting. You know, th- there wasn't a perfect character on that show. I could guess. The... I could oh, yeah. guess who was human and who was silent. I had no idea. I, but that was the, the glowing worst. spines gave it away. Ah, well, yeah. After <laughs> yeah. <laughs> once you got there, yeah, yeah. That's that was that was definitely a trigger. Yeah. <laughs> you do, you do. Ronald Gibor had it in mind. He's like, oh well let's make let's make their spines glow when they have sex. Oh that'll you... that'll rip it in people. Yep, yep. Oh well, never mind. Yeah. I I'm sitting here thinking, well, how would you know their spines glow? And I'm like, no, never mind. Yep. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. They found the spot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> when you find the spot, it makes the spine glow. <laughs> Oh and my god. Boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> and boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> All right. That's a uh, mic drop moment. That's a good transition. Go. That's a good transition. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I you know, I, I love hearing because 
you know, Mac and I would have a tendency to dive into the sci-fi for the sci-fi, but it's kind of neat hearing how you got drawn into it. There is a gritty realism that, it, again, it, it's it very indicative of post 9-11, a lot of that darker turn, fighting, you know, fighting the unseen enemy. Yeah. You know, that showed up in a lot of shows. That's why I have a lot of shows about the FBI, the CIA, you know, military, all, uh, terrorist is a plot and everything. You know? Speaking of which, fighting the unseen enemy and everything, Broham, you watched, you were introduced to Stargate SG-1 before I was, a full year before I was. Do you remember this? I'm not sure if you're transitioning. Yeah. Are you saying he was the unseen enemy? He no, well, no. There's the unseen enemy in Stargate, but yeah, he. I mean, the fact that I didn't know yeah. that he knew this uh, show. Yeah, he knew this show for a full flipping year. Yeah, before yeah when I, we talked about Stargate, the, he was really pissed. That was like main, episode five for us, and he was pissed. The main character, what, what was his name? What's his name? What other things did he do? Macaco MacGyver, Stargate. Yeah, it was, was MacGyver. MacGyver. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why. So yeah. I loved MacGyver when I was a kid. I absolutely I remember that. loved you, you and I, I watched loved... MacGyver together. Yes. Oh God. I and we saw. MacGyver. We saw. Do you remember watching the MacGyver finale in 1992? Huh? I did. Yeah. yeah. I dude. Yeah. I loved. I loved MacGyver. Just the idea of <laughs> it was just getting so cool. yourself. Do you understand how much I used that in life when I was growing up? Just to get out of trouble. It wasn't even like I did anything really wrong, but I'm like, okay, if I could do this and make this happen and that <laughs> fall, and then that person trips, I can get right and I'm gone. You know, like you just it taught it taught you to to know your surroundings and kind of pay attention right. a little bit. But when I saw that him starring in that, I was like, oh, I'll watch this. And it was it was good for the most part. I mean, I didn't the the woman in it was was pretty attractive by Sam my Carter. character. Yeah, by by my characteristics for what I liked, so that despite being that Canadian, helps. I got you. Yeah, yeah, she's very very polite. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's what I dig. Super polite. I'm really. Well, I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing it being broadcast on on national television for the first time a year after it premiered on Showtime, and this was December. This was December twelfth. It was the day after DT and I saw Star Trek Insurrection. Um, I'm just gonna take your word for it. How am I premiere. supposed to look this up and and, and tell I don't him even know this. wrong? I remember we saw that movie together, but I couldn't we nail saw, down the date. We you saw we saw Star still? Trek. Yeah, I, actually, I do. Oh, I wasn't. I was, I was hoping you would. Serious? I do. I could find it. I'll send you guys. A picture oh, you have the it. movie stub? I still have the movie stub. Yeah. Um, I used to keep movie stubs for a while, and I mean, I, I didn't. Kept, yeah, but then you traveled the world. <laughs> yeah, well, I I traveled the country, whatever. I, I I just I kept the little thing that held them. I mean, you know, and how you know after twenty years, how can you throw that out? Don't say uh, easily. It's so. not a wallet. <laughs> I would love mine. to. I would love to argue mine. with you, but I've seen your house. Yeah, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> not a paradise. <laughs> <laughs> it, it His don't storage look at my garage has a storage garage. <laughs> oh boy. All right, we're going into the territory here. But I'm kidding. I was watching this, I, so on December 12th, I remember watching this because that night was going to be a big night for me. Um, that set the stage for the rest of my high school career. But uh, so I was watching this on TV, and you came over to my room, and I'm like, hey, have you seen this? This is the, the Stargate show. And it's, it's actually really good. The music is fantastic. And you're like, oh, yeah. Well, you see the guy in the snake helmet? He's going to turn good, and he's going to turn on all the bad guys. <laughs> what? Sounds I'm like, like hey, what? what? <laughs> Why was you? And then and then it happened. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <Yeah. sighs> you know, try to watch that show in your room because you had cable access, like better cable access than I. And <sighs> it would come down. You 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 literally I'm playing I'm watching the show in the Hey bud. Uh can you head upstairs? And I'm like uh, you know, I'm uh I was nice <laughs> <Okay>. about it. <laughs> so you kicked me out. We got I got I got maybe you, you eight couldn't minutes read in. clues ever. We got eight ever. minutes in. Eight I mean minutes. I wish I would have told you to pause it, but we're, you know we, we, we weren't living in the Star Trek world. There's no other room to work with. 
dude. You got a whole other room to work with. What I didn't get that in my room. You I weren't good at negotiating. <laughs> this thing has been a burr under his saddle for whatever twenty five years, yes, man. I mentioned just this know this. Yes, by the way, when, when we did the, the Stargate <laughs> podcast. He was as angry about this as I was about the military inaccuracies of the show. <laughs> yeah, that's I, why he can't watch it, by the way. It's a perfectly great sci-fi show, but he can't watch it because of the military artistic license. Hey, in the, in the, in the two-hour pilot that launches the show, well, the whole reason they send a crew through the Stargate is to rescue this airman, this female airman who was kidnapped, she gets murdered. They never talk to her. They never fight her. Nobody ever <laughs> asks a question when they get there. The entire purpose of the mission. The one flaw. The one the, flaw. <laughs> for you, the one minor flaw I know, would be I know. a huge deal for, for me in my life. I Just get saying, it. It was hard stupid. to push through. I understand. And I but still afterwards, watched the next four episodes. Crap. Oh, yeah, you did. And you you weren't. Oh, by the way, the first four episodes weren't that great. That's the problem. It Episode got, six. Is it, got great. Good. it got good. I'm not saying I'm opposed to it. I'm just saying it was a stumbling point that I that I struggled with. Dude, the 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 the, the after the Kowalski episode where he got got found out as being a ghoul old. The next episode was Emancipation, which was written by the same person who wrote. Code of Honor from Star Trek The Next Generation. The oh, most racist course. episode ever. Obviously. It was oh, literally the right. same yeah, episode. Yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> Wait, what? An entire, an entire planet. Literally an episode. The, the, the same episode. African tribesmen? In TNG. African, a, African tribesmen steal Tasha Yar, the white woman, yeah, to, be, what, to be the queen. <laughs> Like the king steals her to be their queen. His his new bride. One of his or wives. One of his wives. It, that's the thing. It was polygamy. It was like it was a poly polyamory. It, it, it was, whatever. So this went really was, well was, in Utah. No, this, this didn't go really well in many. It didn't go really places. well anywhere. Really well anywhere. No, yeah. even the actors are like, guys, uh, this is awful. Is it yeah. one of those ones where, like, when they play it on in syndication, they're like, "We're just going to skip this one. This is one we don't." It play was anymore. one of those when they played it yeah. in syndication. I would watch it as a as an eleven year old and be like, "I'm going to go outside." Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I, would I saw it once. It. That's all I need to see it. <laughs> that's oh, all. that's funny. That's funny. That, no, I mean, that, not it. not the the out. The, 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 your response the, the was funny? 11 year old reaction it was, was funny, funny because yes. because episode. an 11 year old could recognize how wrong. terrible it was wrong yes correct yes no, no and that's what that. that's what emancipation was it was a bunch of of asian tribes stealing oh, no. a blonde woman <laughs> the guy recycled <laughs> to, it to, to be See, part of his harem his own idea the writer was a woman the writer was a woman Okay, well, there's some psychological different time? fantasies going on there. That well, why don't we, we just go with different time? Unpack. Different time? It was 1987 and 1996. Listen. 1996. No, 1997. Sorry. 1997. Oh, even better. But seriously, dude. Like, 97 was much more modern than 87. Oh, you have to admit yeah. that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Like, it was the same story. It was insane. It was insane. So when I was introduced to Stargate, when I was able to actually watch it without being interrupted, Dick, um, I was able to. Uh, someone shared. Yeah, I the thought you said not to me. use real names. Sorry. Richard. I'm so, Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well I've done. been well pretty played. good. Well played. <laughs> um, someone was able to share it with me on their server in my my junior year of college. We are like. Deeply mining this, this, the technology of the. Dark. I know, I know. <laughs> and I was, they were able to share it with me on their server my junior Someone year. Someone brought their mini disc player, and I was able yeah. to transfer it. <laughs> <laughs> Not far off. So uh, I downloaded I, I had a mini disc player. <laughs> <laughs> I used my toy. Well, back then it was Kazaa. You could you could you could download oh stuff off Kazaa, not 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 oh, not Napster yeah. with non oh. non audio stuff. Oh, <laughs> did, did your guys wire. college have like like almost like network where like people would like store m movies and music like 
on like a share file and like you could go and, and pull things to your file? I had to, no. So I had to be I in had private some sort housing. of intranet. Yeah, I had to be in private housing and the private housing had intranet. So I wasn't on, on the school internet. And that's how I was able to, because I was able to log on to someone else's server actually at Boston University. So, <laughs> so I'm in LA. I'm logging into this server in Boston University that this guy is hosting, and I'm able to watch the first season of uh, of Stargate SG One. But I didn't see the the episode after the pilot where Kowalski gets found out. It goes immediately into Emancipation, which was the third episode technically. And so the other I'm sitting one here going, "Too good." I'm sitting here going, that was a good episode, right? They didn't have it. They didn't have it. So I'm sitting here like, what about Kowalski? Where's Kowalski? And then he shows up as a dead person in like season three or something as a, in a vision. And I'm like, what the fuck happened to you? Because <laughs> when, I, when I graduated and I got money, I was able to buy the series, uh, one, you know, one series at a time in chunks. I started on season three. I didn't start on season one. Oh, well, you know, because I had season one backed up, if you know what I mean. So I had no idea that 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 episode existed. Did you just <laughs> so, gotta take a poop. Uh, I think. So, <laughs> so I watched seasons one. It's all shit to me. Six. Anyway. <laughs> I eventually I bought, over the course of one year, I bought seasons three through six. And then I went and bought one and two. And then that's when I figured it out. It took 2006 for me to realize that issue. Remember you were talking about future math? Yeah. It's your, broken. Your past math was terrible. <laughs> I stand by it. Checks out. I'm going to stand by it. I'm going to stand by it. Well played. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on one yeah. moment, gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> There's just something wrong with you. What the hell is wrong with me? I started with season three. Alphabetically or numerical order? Numerical order. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> First. <laughs> I started with season whatever. You know, Damn I'll it. be honest. The, the, the things I think uh, that I like about sci-fi now or that I'd appreciate if we could get to at this point would be like the food and beverage generators where I don't Ooh, have to yes. keep spending my money for the beverages that I would like to have. A replicator would be I, awesome. Yeah, I just feel like we're close, and why? You know, is it because you won't make as much money? It's, it's because it'll problem. collapse the entire economy. Listen, Possibly. sometimes <laughs> that's got to happen, you know? It'll collapse the entire first world. I mean, it'll well, be wonderful for the third world, but collapse everything. It collapsed everything in the first world. <laughs> yeah, well, it will just turn farmers into hipsters anyway. <laughs> weed farmers. But even then, you can just replicate weed. So. Well, you don't even, but then it would be the synthetic no shit one, that nobody likes anyway. No one has to That's be true. involved with replicating that. Just throw the seeds out and it'll do it. It'll do itself. It'll grow through concrete. Dude. They mentioned replicating cannabis edibles in Star uh, Star Trek Strange New World. They made right? a cannabis reference in Picard. They did. Oh, that, that was it there or was they it Strange New World? For those, they were looking for the Changeling's pot. Well, pot. you know, I DT, what's, you're not what's, your, what's your That's thoughts on right. it? That's right. What's your thoughts on it with the background that you have? What, with, with weed? Yeah. No, with Star Trek. No, of course uh. weed. I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I've not partaken, and since I technically work in the transportation industry right now, I kind of fall under the same. Right, I understand federal I understand. rules, so, DOT licensing. And but that I just deal, yeah. here's the thing: I don't care if That's you do fair. it. I just it's like smoking. I don't want to smell your smoke. Yeah, 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 yeah. And That's the thing. Please don't don't be I'm on the really just sweet. like if you're drinking. I'm fine if you're drinking. Just don't get on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Be responsible. Don't be an asshole. Right. And, and don't be that person who puts a pot leaf on everything. And right. Roll 20 is everything. Makes it a religion. It's, it's the yeah. Makes it a religion. Right. I feel the same way about Now that it's legal in most states, it's not even cool to put that up anymore. Yeah, yeah. 
I feel like that, who, the guy friendly. who wears the Budweiser T-shirt and, and has the Budweiser hat. If you don't like racing, what are you doing? Like you look ridiculous. You know. Yeah, I know, right? Are they are they doing that now though? <laughs> the best is seeing that guy smoke weed though. <laughs> yep, yep. He's ashing in the Budweiser can now. <clears throat> you know, I, it 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 only bothers me like when I'm out like. Trying to, you know, uh, let, let's say in a crowded group. Actually, when I was out in Springfield two weekends ago for my anniversary, we went to the Red Sox weekend. Springfield, Springfield. You know, it was right next to, it, it was partially in the big casino they have out there. Mm-hmm. You couldn't walk anywhere outside without walking into a big cloud of, right. you know, Willie Nelson's best or something. Right, yeah. That's what it Boston's was, turning into, by the way, too. I, I that was think before it was technically legal. Uh, I think I, I think it's made a huge jump since it. But, you know, it's interesting that it's being uh, brought up in sci-fi episodes in different ways. That's I think it's interesting. Well, it always used to be in like those stoner sci-fis or something. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It was always a punchline. The big joke, you know. You know? Now it's well, which, well, now it's in everything. <laughs> Well, there was the there was a Star Trek episode, uh, Symbiosis, in season one. You might remember this, DT, where it was literally a, a complying with Nancy Reagan's "Just Say No" campaign, where, where, where there's one planet that is completely dependent on another one to give them medicine for a, a, a phage or some kind of condition that they have. And if they don't get the medicine, their entire population is going to die. Like, and the Enterprise comes across this one ship that's about to explode. It's carrying the shipment from the plant, the supplier planet to the recipient planet. Enterprise comes, beams the medicine first, thinking that it's the people, and then they beam the two pilots. Yeah. And then, uh, long story short, Dr. Crusher finds out that it's like a narcotic. And as soon as they inject themselves <clears throat> with the medicine, they have like an immediate, like, they have a great uh, time. Yeah. Like an yeah, immediate kinda. release yeah. of, like, you know. Endorphins. And then there's this scene. So Dr. Crusher figures out that. Oh no, this one planet is exploiting this other one by making them drug dependent on them. Um, yeah, don't worry, a, Star Trek was... never dealt with drugs again. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but <laughs> catch yourself white. Uh, <laughs> so, but, but that one was a little bit more perfect. There was the scene. Oh shit. Can I pull it up? Can you give me a second to pull up the, the just say no Wesley Crusher scene? Was this the scene where Tasha Yar is giving him yes. a lecture about drugs? Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm going to pull it up. Give me a second. I'm uh, fine with it. Just yourself. <laughs> Rhode okay. Island, neither a road nor an island. Uh, facts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this hey, is what this he does. Is Kiss he, goes radio. On, he goes down these. This is Kiss Radio. <laughs> Kiss Rays, Kiss Radio, God. You know, from family. Hey, <laughs> welcome to Kiss Talk. Let's take a call. Yeah, yeah. Kiss rules. All right. Good call. Hey, good call. Good talk. All right. Moving on. Hey, I was, I was just calling. <laughs> Kiss sucks. Hey, you suck. <laughs> it's like, hey, is this so and so from from Sticks? So, he, come on, man. Be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just so ridiculous. I don't know. Oh, dude, if you're going to spend this long going down the rabbit no, hole, I got it, I got bring it, a I got carrot. It. Bring a carrot. Here it is. Data, I can understand how this could happen to the Onarans. <laughs> what I can't understand is why anyone would voluntarily become dependent on a chemical. Voluntary addiction to drugs <laughs> is a recurrent theme in many cultures. Wesley, become dependent. Why do people start? On my home planet, there was so much poverty and violence that for some, the only escape is through drugs. How can a chemical substance provide an escape? You have to understand, drugs can make you feel good. (laughs) They make you feel on top of the world. You're happy, sure of yourself, in control. 
At the same time, you're not. But it's artificial. <laughs> it doesn't feel artificial. Pay the price. Before you know it, you're taking the drug to feel good. All you care about is getting your next dosage. I believe Dave is Nothing interested in drugs if you look at his eyes. I guess I understand. Y'all, writing it down, do. writing it down. There's, there's Put that some... crack in a safe place. <laughs> Put that crack in a safe place? <laughs> Someone obviously edited over this, but there was some oh, definitely... Oh, there was, yeah. There was some wonky cl clipping of that, but... Yeah, yeah there, there was not. some editing going on there. <laughs> I mean, that's the gist of it. Yes, let's go ahead and talk to the artificial light form about how things can be addictive. He's like, they say it makes you feel good, 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 good. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, but you know, like they say, it's, you know, cocaine's not awesome, but you just like the way it smells. No, I've heard nothing, nothing so. great, but about about cocaine. Uh, never mind. About cocaine. Rick, ja Rick James once said, "Cocaine's a hell of a drug." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear it's yummy, but I've oh. never tried it. I heard it smells good. <laughs> you heard it smells good. I know yeah. you said that before. You but... be careful. Yeah, you, you get a little something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh God, the no, dark days I... of the next generation. <laughs> Tis. Tis. Well, that was that was at the direct. Just say no to drugs, kids. That was at the direct order of Nancy Reagan. That's all we need to say. Well, then, you know, <laughs> some would argue Saved by the Bell did the same thing. You know, it all depends on what you were watching I'm at so the time. I'm so excited. And she, the, the one addicted to caffeine but pills, was, went on to caffeine star in, well, what the, yeah, when they, the one when that they went to star on Showgirls. <laughs> Remember when they smoked it? They found someone, they found a joint in the bathroom and they filmed a commercial. Just say no to pop. Oh. It was, it was. Yeah, it was, you know, so it changed my life. It changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on, I got one that's gonna blow your mind too. I, I, I was so I'm so against like the big trends. I, I pretty much stayed away from weed because people wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's now, Mister Dead Air? I know it's this I, one. You know, growing up, I played too much golf. I feel like, oh, what we got here? Oh, I remember this. This was ridiculous. <laughs> I haven't thought about this commercial in like 30 years. I don't years. think I've ever seen this. All right, all right. I think it's a so soft was, sound, so be they quiet. They would drop quiet. it in Saturday morning cartoons. They didn't, they, they, they only played this. We only saw this after we moved back to New England in 1988, dude. So hold on. Dato? Where are you? Oh no, that's awful sound. Hold on. Here we go. This Get is on with it. I was invested. Here we go. Oh. Where are you? <laughs> oh no, he's on fire. Huh? Oh, Artu, you're on fire. Artu, D2, you found a cigarette. Well, I don't think smoking is grown up at all. Because it's very dangerous. Smoking does dreadful things to your lungs. Oh. And it's very bad is for your heart. Is he going to put this in his intake? Well, I know I don't have one, but humans do. And I think we should set a good example. Well Drop done, it. R2. Oh, Start a hello. fire. You know smoking is bad for your health. <laughs> and it isn't grown up at all. So please, don't smoke. <laughs> oh, hello. Do you really think I don't have a heart? Oh, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> does, does that. Do you remember any of that, dude? I do. I do. Not. I do, not. I do. I do. I do. No. It's literally in Channel 56, Boston. It played. Oh. That's what it played, dude. No, like exactly. Saturday morning cartoons, man. It played in the morning. Played in the afternoon. It played constantly. Constantly. With the kids. Yeah. No, I didn't pay attention. Well, I mean, we grew up with a parent that smoked cigarettes, so I didn't. I never paid attention to it. Well, yeah. You, when you, know, you saw it every I, day. I, I think your your parents didn't like science fiction, right? Uh, literally, if my, they did. 
literally my father that I collected baseball cards, dude, when I went to him and said, hey, dad, there's this cool thing where this this dolphin is is a navigator in the galaxy and he works oh. on the USS Enterprise. <laughs> Wait, wasn't that Sequest? No, well, that <laughs> was Sequest. Like but you still, yeah. Star Trek. Yes. I'm like, wait a minute. We had when he worked in television, he gave us. Remember, we had the copy that we had a VHS tape before it hit the air. The pilot. Oh the my pilot god, we did have the, the pilot. Yeah, I, well, I seem to recall you guys had a stack of like these. Oh, stack of pilots. Yeah. The dinosaur. Yeah. Remember the dinosaurs? We had a, we had that pilot. We did have the dinosaur the, pilot. Big but Bang Jim Theory. Henson we had that, that pilot later on in life. No, we didn't have the Big Bang. No, Bang no, Theory. it was a different one with Johnny with that. Kovecki guy. Nerds. Right? It was nerds, it was yeah, yeah. It was dweebs. Dweebs, dweebs, yeah, yeah. Oh, dweebs. yeah, yeah. Dweebs. It, was, it was like a different version of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, like yeah. the early version of the Silicon Valley, uh, yeah. the <laughs> the work sitcom. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Wow, that thing but he never, like five I always, episodes. You can always tell he never brought home the sci-fi stuff, though. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I, I, I don't have it out immediately but i did save it dad did meet the, the the president of united paramount network and told him that i was a big fan of star trek and oh. the president of upn literally sent me personally a package saying heard you like star trek enjoy and it was a and package. It was all Babylon 5 stuff. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it would make sense. It would make sense because the CEO doesn't know shit. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's funny. But no, he sent me a, a packaged box of, of Spock that I have not opened at all to this day. I, I got to figure out where I keep them. eBay that I shit. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I had those. those uh, the insignias for the longest time in the house when you were gone after you left for college and stuff. Oh, you used my insignias? No, I didn't use them. They were in the plaque. Remember the gold and silver oh, insignias? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones, yeah. I have them used them instead yeah. of Hold on. balls for yeah. beer pong. <laughs> no, no, no. I kept those for him. I knew those were special, you know? When, yeah. Uh, I made sure that those stuck around. Yeah, and he appreciated that. He he bragged about it in our nostalgia episode. Where oh, we pulled out all of our. I'll be cool honest, shit. man. Even when like that was something I'm like, there's even if he de never like forgets about it, it'll be something I hold on to just to make sure it doesn't go to the wrong hands. But well, it'll be almost uh, like if you got like a, a a set of golf balls, like one that was hit by Jack Nicholas and one that oh, was hit by Tiger and Phil you Mickelson. Mean my my uh, my Brad Faxon golf ball that I also lost fifty dollars to. <laughs> Sure. You don't you don't bet Brad Faxon in a putting contest when he was ranked number one in the world. <laughs> oh, you literally bet him? Uh, yeah, of course. I ran into him at Rhode Island Country Club when I was playing high school golf with one of the members there. And he came out of the clubhouse and he was practicing putting and we were on the putting green. And I bet him 50 bucks that he couldn't hit a 105 foot putt. Pay that attention broke, to me. It broke no. four times. All right, fine. That, see, that thing's wild. I, I love that. <laughs> P.S. That thing's beautiful. And he well, laughed. You, it. You, you, you saved it. Yeah. I told you to sell it. I know. You already went through the story. but Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. No way. That thing's priceless. I mean, see, there's like, like 5,000 replicas, but, you know, when you look it up, what? it's not worth that much. <laughs> I, I, re I remember when you got it and you were like so anxious to show it to me because... I knew my folks wouldn't buy it. Well, you're the only one that appreciated <laughs> no, it, too. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was anxious to show it to you. It was not because I knew your parents weren't anxious to get you any. No, 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 but no. no. I, 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 was, I was excited to see it because I knew my folks wouldn't. You weren't trying to rub it in. I was excited no. to see it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, yeah, no, you guys always were like that. You didn't rub stuff in. You guys were excited to share something, to share a moment. We did. In it. We shared well, the to be shit honest out with you, our, we were the only ones who really liked this stuff. So, you yeah. know, rather than tear each other down, we were the only ones who would build each other up about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like, oh, you got the you got the color version of the Star Trek Encyclopedia, hardbound. Oh, you were so jealous, son about of a that, bitch. Though. You you son of a bitch. <laughs> I was jealous, and it was updated too with Star Trek Voyager. 
know. <laughs> you weren't and you weren't hating on me, but you did want it. You were very envious. <laughs> I looked at it longingly. I looked. I I opened it. I caressed like some of the the pic. The, I, the, I the had to shake shapes. down your backpack before you left the house. No, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't have that. I, you know, you guys had a different appreciation for that stuff. That was cool. Well, I mean, in some ways, it was kind of like being in a, in a selective club, right? Well, you know, like we we all played little league, right? That's right. just what you did, you, mm -hmm. whether you wanted to or not, right? Yeah, we were all yeah. forced into playing that when we were much younger. Mm -hmm. Some people stayed with it, really like got into sports. I still liked sports, but this was something. This was a different part of my life that yeah. I also very much enjoyed. I like sitting down and watching the Pats games, but then, you know, I might want to watch a rerun of the next generation after I was done with that. Right. You know, that was just kind of the dichotomy of my life. But, yeah. you know, I could talk to my dad about sports. I could talk to you or some of the other dudes in the neighborhood or at school about football or the Red Sox or something. But your brother was like the only one who I could like say, I'm really excited for this week's episode of Deep Space Nine, you know, or yeah. Babylon, hey, 5. I, Babylon 5, or hey, let's go see First Special Contact. Edition Star Wars when they came back out. Oh, yeah, know. we saw we saw all three of those those uh, premieres uh, together over the course of that that six, four weeks. Four weeks? It was just cool. I mean, because they the released starters, all of those movies weeks. came out either before we were born or when we were infants so oh, yeah um, when you guys were doing the, that yeah but that was kind okay, of a neat experience january 97 it was awesome yeah, well, you know, well it was the 20 years it's interesting that you guys kind of picked like a sci-fi that was your was your like niche in a sense like it was different yeah. than the norm like and i played no, golf no, I, neighborhood yeah Follow well, that in any way shape or form you know this yeah well there's <laughs> no one else that played golf in the neighborhood when we were kids you there know, was I one was guy. The only one. Well, uh, who? Uh, Give me initials. Up the street. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, but you're right. I, I, I tried uh, golf lessons, and it just didn't stick with me. <laughs> I, 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 I love it. But I remember everyone in the neighborhood, you know, making fun of me. And I'd be like, no, I'm going to I'm playing golf tomorrow. And I, would, I remember I, there were summers where I went every day. I was dropped off at the golf course and it was a kept me out of trouble and B I got really good and I played high school. I could, and I think awesome. I could have gone on to play more if I didn't hurt myself, but yeah, I was dropped off with you and I went to the pool and I was told I could order anything at the snack shack and that was a bad idea. So <laughs> well, hey, I, uh, I would play 36 holes a day during that time. Yeah. And then there were times that I would play, I would go caddy in the morning to make money and then go play golf in the afternoon. It was wild. I, st I think hey, about man, those man. days all the time. It was wild. But that was awesome. nobody else. Like, But today, everyone's that I run to is like, man, I remember like making it fun of you about playing golf. And now, like today, I wish I played golf. Like I suck at golf and all everybody does in my business is play golf. I'm like, yeah, well. And then if I play golf and then they're like, dude, it's not fun to play with you because you're really good. And I went, well, you know, remember when you made fun of me? I, I was pretty good then, too. <laughs> <laughs> I got better. <laughs> and, and you know what? I get it. I used to get ribbing for swimming, too. Hmm. I mean, well, yeah, we yeah, all yeah. swam in the pool. and then some Oh, of yeah, us we did, did that. Mm -hmm. And some of us did the swim team in the summer, but I stuck yeah. with it. Yeah, it was yeah. something I got good at. Yeah. I probably wasn't as good at competitive swimming as you were at competitive golf but yeah. um i still swam in college i was in a division one program and you know i i kind of set set that aside not that i was ever a, <laughs> a shoe in for an olympic team but i set it aside for my career but every now and then i you know i'd if i could get to a point in my career where i was at a base that had a good pool and i could get in during you know, a couple times a week. That was usually when I was at my most fit. And, you know, I'd always run into some smart guy who thought he was hot because he, you know, he could swim a 200. And I would, you know, just gladly get in the pool and make him eat my wake for three minutes straight. 
Yeah, yeah. This you know, one it kid reminds me. who thought because he grew up half of his life in Puerto Rico and he grew up swimming that he was going to be Mr. You know, he was going to be like Michael Phelps. I, <laughs> I just got in and I just did my laps and he was like dragging ass. Came in like an entire minute after me. He's like, dude, what? Like, look, just I just swam competitively. There's a difference between being out and sticking around in the water and being a competitive swimmer. That's what I do. Yeah. Yep. Well, I was a lifeguard, of... too. Talk about work and play. I sure. lifeguarded and I was a competitive swimmer. Yeah. Well, I mean, everything you're saying just rings true. Like after I graduated college and, you know, I went to. I, you know, I went to training from for my job in insurance, and I went to a local high school, and I saw the 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 local uh, you know cheerleading team, and I saw them do some calf pops, and I I went in and I said, you you think those are calf pops? These are calf pops, and I showed them you know a full roundhouse uh, back tuck, with uh you know. Um, when were you escorted out? It was it was pretty quick. It was pretty quick actually. So. Really? <laughs> you want to spend? I went to a local high school. That just never sounds good. You could have said like I went to the local pool. It'd be better, <laughs> you know. But I, none of you were cheerleaders, so no. No, I, was not. I was not. So but, you know, I think well, I, no, I get it, man. If, if it, it, I'm sure when you watch that stuff. It, it means something different than if I'm watching. Oh, holy, it. Yeah. holy crap! When I saw when I saw the showcase last night. Uh, by the way, my daughter had a, a a competitive cheerleading showcase for the school district last night. I was blown away, completely blown away. First of all, by my daughter's team, which was awesome, you know, in fifth grade. But but I, I just saw all the girls like doing all the different you know uh, stunts and stuff, and I'm sat there going, I learned these stunts. As a 21 year old, and we pulled them off better than this. Like, it, you know, it was college. It was college. It was college. Hold on. Don't get me wrong. Are you shit talking your daughter's age group right now? Seriously? No, not, not, not my daughter's age group. I was thinking I was in varsity high school. Varsity high school. Do you want me to go um, ahead and rent a backhoe so you can dig this hole better? Yeah, you probably should if you, as long as you pay for it. Uh, <laughs> so, but it's just enough to bury you. But I'm sitting there going, okay. So how you know what? If my daughter is really serious into this, I know this stuff. I know how to be a spotter. I know how to make these girls do this crap that I used to do. Don't like, teach. Should I? Don't I'm, teach. I'm sitting here like, Don't teach your own kid. Never teach your own kid. Oh, well, that's the thing, right? And then I become the creepy guy that 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 teaches all the girls that are not my daughter. <sighs> So I'm like, no, there's no way. There's just no way. I was going to try to argue you don't teach your own kid because I thought my dad taught me golf. But then I remember that Dana Quigley taught me my swing and he ended up being a pro for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, he was. So in all reality, I had professional <laughs> teaching. So what I can say is don't teach your kid. Yeah, make <laughs> someone else teach your kid. Yep. <laughs> my kid and I are too much alike, so when we talk swimming, sometimes it's, it's just like, oh, it's well, like she's having yeah. an internal monologue only externally. I think that yeah, would I'm, literally be, that would literally yeah. be what would happen, like heads butting with my daughter. Do you remember whole, undermining parents? in front of all the other uh, in front of all the other squad? So, yeah. <laughs> do, do you remember when your parents? Uh, DT and our parents, PS, would be like, "Don't, don't give me that look." And yeah. you'd be like, what look? Well, I see that look every day in my son. And then I go, don't give me. <laughs> I know what don't you're thinking. How do you know what I'm thinking? Because yeah, exactly. you're me. Yeah. 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 Oh. You were me. Oh. How do you know what I'm thinking? And in my head, I went, what did I say? And he goes, fuck you. And I went, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. It's you true. Know. Yeah, but that's they're great. Have more. Well, you know, it's the circle of life. Uh, thank you. Not? I shall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, uh, we we lucked out. We don't need to worry about having a, a, another kid because we spent so much time uh, with our nephew. So facts. That's that helps. Awesome. 
that's facts. Good thing. That's a great thing, by the way. And I'm really happy for yeah. you guys on that. That's awesome. I look forward to. Yeah, being yeah, he, he's a great kid. He's a <laughs> handful. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, I I remember when we were kids. You know, just just this big herd of kids just roaming around in the neighborhood. But That's every now and then, it was, by the way. But mm. then at times, you and I would break off because, oh, cool. This, this this episode of the Next Generation that we've seen four times is on. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know? All right, so <coughs> let's talk about Inner Light for a second. Probably the most acclaimed episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation ever. Lane, uh, L- L- Lane, I was about to call you, but. Um, Broham. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. 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 Broham. Uh, do you remember the episode that I'm talking about? The one with the flute? Yeah. Uh, we, uh, Next time. Generation? It's is that what it is? Yeah. Yes, I yeah. think so. Yeah, with Picard and a flute. Is that what it is? Or was it a he piccolo? Plays the flute. He plays flute? the flute. Yeah. He plays yeah. the tin flute. He literally plays the tin flute. Yeah. And how many times did I sit there when that episode aired... Oh, you and it played that like too? Twice in a, in a summer. And I would sit there trying to mimic the show as it aired. Mm-hmm. Because that was the only time that I could actually like learn from it. And, and then people would be in there, in the room, and I'd be like, shut up, shut up, shut up! I gotta figure this tune out, because I need to repeat it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was weird. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make was, it more weird? I think I can do and play it. Go grab my flute and play it. <laughs> Bet. Uh, sure. We're not gonna uh, s- send us send us the video later. <laughs> I'll send I'll send you the audio later. <laughs> if you you better play the you better you better send me the audio of uh, what is it Willy Wonka when he plays the little, you know when the little guy show up. <laughs> you know, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> Mm. No, that was but a multi orchestral uh, thing, but whatever. Anyway, you know, hey, you know, six of <laughs> whatever floats your boat, man. Other. What has nine so... arms it still sucks. Def Leppard, but moving on. <laughs> um... <laughs> back to back to what we're talking. About. That's an old <laughs> joke, by the way. Know, That's such an old joke. Why was that so funny? <laughs> so wonderful. Joke. I know. It, it's it's just good. Yeah. So so bro. Mac tells me that you guys, when you were still out west, you guys would go see like the Marvel movies together. Uh, we did. We would try. We we went to go see a few movies together. Uh, so, I think... well, well, the question I I had about that is, you know, you know, was this just kind of left over from you know like because you like comic books when you were a kid or. You know, Batman was always cool, no matter who you were. Kind of. Oh, thing. Michael Spider-Man. Keaton will always be my Batman. You know, well, yeah, he's out a, there. He was a great fucking there. Batman. It's a great Batman. It's a great Batman. No, I think but, it was. Yeah, it was. It was uh, just the ability to 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 reconnect with my brother. The things that that we connected on that we kind of you know as kids, I would watch the Star, you know, all the sci-fi stuff with him. And I didn't really, I didn't tell any of my friends I was watching it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> of course you wouldn't. Of no. course you wouldn't. <laughs> no, I didn't tell any of I that. didn't really go around and tell a lot of people myself, but I right. I didn't hide well, you it. Also, I just didn't. If you were confronted with it, you weren't bashful about it. You were like, yeah, I like it. You know? No, you I know? hit it. I hit it. Yeah, you the did. I, read, I, I, I put covers on, on paperback books. Well, yeah, but that was that? A, that was just school. We were required to. <laughs> no, no, I put covers on paperback Star Trek books, asshole. Oh. <laughs> that I yeah. brought into school so I could read, well, and no one knew that, that I was. So reading. I didn't make fun of you. No, I did that so the other people couldn't. You knew what I was doing. Yeah, no, I but, get it. I get it. You know, um... but, but my major girlfriends never knew I liked Star Trek. Never knew. Yeah, well, what about the, the insignias? Taking, You'd be like, well, those are gold and silver. That's worth money. <laughs> they <laughs> so never asked. They didn't think about it. It's a smart it. investment. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, that's well, just it was an you know? Literally an investment, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing the streets, you know, Wall Street. <laughs> this is all good. It's all good. Precious metals. Don't worry about it. I didn't have it on. Sh- 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 First of all, 
First of all, in the first episode, in the first episode, first my first bedroom in in our local town that we the three of us shared didn't have enough girls up there for long enough to know that. And don't don't read into that. Don't read into how long that was. Um, The second the second town didn't have those insignias up in my room. So (laughs) no, that's true. That's true. Pajamas though. They were they're on the bed sheet so. (laughs) You know, I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did have a Star Trek Enterprise D uh, phone that was circling a, a Saturn planet, and yeah. I took the Enterprise D off when I moved to the new the the new town. So it was just a phone with a planet. It was, red, DC. It so was, it was just a just... red round, phone with no rings on it anymore. Wow. I took the rings of the Enterprise off. So it just looked like a pimple with a phone. God, <laughs> He's like, I'm really into dermatology. Hello. Hello? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. This, trust me, this looks better. Yeah, I mean, you should see any, what it looked like before. Any vestiges of Star Trek stuff that I had in the first bedroom, gone in the second bedroom. And it was successful. It worked. But It just it blows me away. Go for, come full circle. Uh, that how how big sci-fi actually is now, and how accepted, and how if you don't if you don't watch it, you don't dig it. It's you know you're on the outside looking in, but well, it's also like for me, it's a okay. great it's a great goddamn escape. Yeah, it's that's escape. what it always was. That's what it always was supposed to be. But that's what golf is for me, you know. So I never understood it to that aspect because golf was like get away from everybody. Yeah, and when you're young and dumb and stupid, you're not going to look at someone that you don't understand and realize that. Or like, you win a car playing how golf. golf could be, I didn't understand and how you, golf could be relaxing because I found it freaking stressful and, and awkward. Rewarding. Bro, I know the perfect way to relax you. You go golfing as a Klingon. Dress as a Klingon. It'll oh, set shit. you free. <laughs> you will be the most most happy and relaxed. It'll be the best game of your I life. I feel like it's going to be constricting. Warrior <laughs> shoots the par down the fairway. <laughs> I also don't know how to swear in Klingon. I feel like you just speak in Cambodian with a, with a more accent. <laughs> you, you walked in front of my ball on the green. <laughs> Yeah, then I'm like, to die. Do I get to kill people? Like, <laughs> and your like, house. <laughs> the, the last one that gets to the clubhouse and the foursome wins. <laughs> yeah. Oh. If, if I live. If, if this uh, if if I if I make this hole, the clubhouse shall be red with blood wine on my tab. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to have a warp okay, drive for a good, driver. Maybe Spider-Man. I bet you those Lycra outfits are a little bit looser, you know. <laughs> you know. A little bit. A little Just bit. saying, when you got that giant Klingon fu- uh, fucking sword thing, remember you you made one of those, P.S. Uh, I know. We, yeah. we I talked did, about yeah, that. Out of plywood. <laughs> Freehand. Pretty decent. A little lopsided. Got to be but honest. Had that. Enough. Had that in the house in Rhode Island for years after you, you were gone. For oh, years. The only bitch. reason why it's gone is when if the basement flooded one year. It, oh, the ba- it that that first the, the first time the first there time it no ever flooded in that house. Your house. No, yeah, it, it uh, wiped it, was, it out, it was bro. A particle board, so it would have been yeah. just destroyed. Oh, it swelled oh. up, man. It swelled See, up. You know what? I messed up because I should have stained that. That was my fault. That was I should have stained it. I thought you stained I got, it. With I got blood. some antsy. Yeah. <laughs> you stained it with shame. Me. No, but literally, as a 12-year-old, I'm in the basement, no safety goggles, with a jigsaw and a vice grip, just like carving out a huge piece of particle How the board. Hell did he do oh. this and live? It was the <laughs> 90s. There was no was parent. Really there was no parents around. It was there the was 90s. The <laughs> they were no it was, it was early 90s. It was cool. As this a is not Vietnam. No. <laughs> rules. All the parents looked for was a van in the neighborhood with, with tinted windows. If that wasn't there, the kids could roam for bowling. There are rules. Hey. <laughs> okay, this is not Nam. This is bowling. There are rules. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sure bro here has said on the golf course. 
<laughs> this, is not, this, is, this is golf. There are rules. Yeah, this is golf. There are rules. And if you step on my line again, I'm going to hit you with this goddamn putter. <laughs> yeah, Tiger. So be it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, remember, gentleman's sport, gentleman's game. Yeah. Yep. Like gentlemen, Dueling I'm going to beat. Uh, I'm going to beat you. I will PM. smash this beer bottle on the ground and kill you with it <laughs> as a gentleman. <laughs> okay. Yep. What's the gentleman's game? You have to smash the, the, you gotta <laughs> smash the, the, the bottle of whiskey, not the beer bottle. It's a gentleman's game. Well, I mean, are you playing on a oh private my. course or are you playing on a reggae? You know, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> private course using the gentleman jack bottle, you know? Oh, you got yeah. a pub, you got a, you know on a public a, course, you're beating each other with boxes of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping the bag doesn't rip so you don't lose the weight. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I was just going to say. You need oh that space God. bag in the back. <laughs> what a ridiculous scenario. Oh. No, but it's been done. It's yeah. been oh, done. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we all know it's yep. been done. This just in, man, in cut off t shirt, beaten to death by oh, uh, by oh, Carlo oh. Rossi jug. <laughs> <laughs> While he was putting for his triple bogey on the par three at Sawgrass International. And there we are. Uh, <laughs> his mom did you, not Jim. survive. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait, guys. Wait, uh, wait. Uh, phrasing. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched two episodes of Archer tonight. I needed some. Yep. It's, it's a phenomenal. And see, that's considered sci-fi nowadays. It is sci-fi, yeah. Yeah, it's phenomenal. I didn't realize what sci-fi was growing up, in a sense. I thought sci-fi was Star Trek and anything space-related. I didn't realize yeah, you could talk. Robots, yeah, sure. right. I didn't, you know. Well, that and, you know, you were a big fan of what, Lost? Was it Lost, the original TV series Lost? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. Not Lost. No, not not Lost. either. No. Battlestar. Well, what was the what was the sci-fi one with Danger Will Robinson? Oh, Lost, oh, in, Lost space. in Space. Lost in Space. You guys were both. I would watch that space, in the right? afternoon. Yeah. 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 And yeah, and I, 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 that I was sci-fi, and I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't. Angela Cartwright. But that was cheesy pre-Star Trek. That was like sci-fi. What sci-fi was considered pre-Star Trek, pre the sixth, you know, William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, the original. Yeah. Which allowed them to be a, more serious they took on more serious stuff sci-fi before was all cheesy kitty crap the twilight zone that my son is watching right now the original one the forbidden planet even yeah but, i mean that was the perception watching, my right. son is watching twilight zone right now and he's finding it f- completely fulfilling and and, hey, and, and wildly man. On the wind. Wildly satisfying. Like he's sitting here going, they wrote this well back then. Like literally, that's what he said. Like they write this well, well and I'm sitting here going, yeah, that's what it used to be, bud. <laughs> and today it's crap. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you had a lot of gatekeepers to get the good writers, so <laughs> now it's not so much. But it's not, not about how, how good you write. It's mostly about how good you look. There, there, so, there's also a, a lot more uh, constrictive um, venue at the time. <laughs> there wasn't a million channels, a million networks, a million streaming services, you know, exactly. all competing over it. You know, there was like four channels on your TV. Yeah, there's, a, there's a thinning of the talent. <laughs> so you still have the same number of good writers, but it's spread out over what? 2000 channels or you know let's just say channels because you know using streaming as another channel like that's just what it is it's just insane so well there's definitely a watering down of the talent i think yeah. um but you can still get good writing and yeah, i like do this. think as my protege you should know that the only way to deal with a female adversary is to seduce her the best writing ever in the world. <laughs> they they may have had the smartest writing staff. Like oh yeah, capita. they had like the most PhDs of any, <laughs> any writing staff <laughs> of any TV show in history. It's true. I, 
I went to Rhode Island Comic Con in uh, November with my family, and we sat on a uh, watched a Futurama panel of like four or five of the biggest uh, voice actors were there, and you're just watching these guys just pop in and out of the different voices they do and teasing each other and telling behind the scenes stories. I was in stitches the whole time. Yeah, that's wild. I would love to see something like that. Just to see that, like you said, turn it on and off. That's incredible. That's so, it's yeah. so talented. And, and and it's so damn funny too, because Futurama has been canceled and brought back so many times. Yeah. And they're literally on their th- third three times. revival. Yeah. Three God. times. Well, I mean, how many, How often do we, did we go to Red Sox games and did we go to Paw Sox games and, and PC games and, yeah, and as, as kids, awesome. right, and, and, and watch these professional athletes and future stars, like, you know, play. And then you go to Comic-Con and you're like, wow, it's almost more entertaining to watch them do it because you realize the talent is so different and so unique. When it comes to voice actors and stuff like that, that just blows oh, me away. Yeah. I think that's so interesting. It, it is. And it was wild, too, because, like, it turns out, like, every member of the cast does a Zoidberg. That's, like, that's how they, crazy. like, that's how they, like, hash things out is they all do Zoidberg. I mean, that's it's, cool. it's only it's only one guy who ends up doing it. for. I had it kid. with this game. I'm going for a scuttle. <laughs> that was him playing golf. That was Zoidberg playing golf. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Fitting. that one. Fitting. <laughs> uh, it's nice oh to be God. able to revive some of these old drops. <laughs> That's cool. Oh my God. There's no, there was nothing better. That was the one thing Mrs. Cavman wanted to see when we convinced her she might actually find something interesting about Comic-Con. Because she's not a huge sci-fi fan. But she, she got into Battlestar with me. She loves Futurama. Oh my God, she loves Futurama. Space balls, you know. Cool. Um, she she's found some. There's there's a few things that she's gotten into. Uh, she's humored me with a lot of things over the years. She's gone with me to movies that I know she's not interested in. Also, the good I ones do. Yeah, <laughs> the good but, ones uh, do. Oh man, she she loves Futurama, and she was a big Simpsons fan, but she actually. I think she actually finds Futurama funnier just because of how the, the things they dive into, you know. And it won't die. It just keeps coming back. <laughs> it's literally was a 10 years from the last time it was canceled. That's crazy. And yes. Oh, shit. The Moopsie's free. <laughs> I've seen everything. Oh, God. I've seen it all. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, f- the Moopsie is free. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Star Trek Lower Decks uh, episode, which, which, you which don't is even know. <laughs> what would happen if you let somebody who is a Rick and a Rick and Morty protege do a Star Trek half-hour animated sitcom? <laughs> gotcha. Well, in all yeah. fairness, Rick and Morty is kind of it's kind of funny, <laughs> but it's also very sci-fi. Yeah, it is. Yeah, very when much we, so. Mac and I did two episodes over the last week or so of like all of our favorite like Saturday morning cartoon theme songs and 90% of them would fall under any category of science fiction you know be Darkling it superhero duck. Okay. Dark duck which is basically Batman yeah you know, yeah all the uh, all the Mario Brothers shows that's pretty yeah. sci I get sucked through a t- time warp the super friends which literally was Batman and Superman yeah. Mm-hmm. Inspector Gadget, Pirates of Dark uh, Water. Yeah, Pirates Space Pirates. Water. Oh, oh, okay. What about tail, remember. like Tailspin? Tailspin, yeah. First episode, Anthropomorphic yeah. animals. Yeah. Blue, blue and drag. Spin it in the minute when you spin, spin it when you spin it in a minute. Take a spin it, spin, spin it. Dun, it, did, dun, it did have dun. a pretty fire theme song though. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> uh, should we bring um, it up? For fear of, I will of never turn it down. Track. <laughs> Hold on. It'd be like if you turn Jimmy Buffett into a sloth bear and, and let him fight pirates. That's basically what this show is. <laughs> oh my God. That's true. <laughs> Look, 
Look at this. This is all like 1930. I feel like we're missing a big joint somewhere that should be in here. <laughs> Who's working? He's surfing on clouds. I mean, that's the shot. odds of that. That's a great shot. Looks like the perfect shot. Yep, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, a big, a big cartoon thing was the, the main character always had to end up in drag at some point. Bugs Bunny was yeah, in drag always, in, every yeah. time. In all about fifty percent of the, the shorts he was in, all um, yeah. uh, Mickey was. We all know Mickey was, and yeah, all of them, all of them had to be in drag for some reason. At some point, it started early. It started early in Hollywood. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just as we were finishing part two last night, I was like, you know, almost all of these ones we did would fall under the sci-fi fantasy genre that we kind of lean on. What, what was it? Uh, Brave Star? The uh, the, the oh, space do, cowboy do Native American? That one? No, no, don't. Do you remember that saying, one? <laughs> Brave Star? No, I don't. Yeah, it was, it was a futuristic planet of New Texas. We're a marshal who it, who can call on the powers of the hawk and the puma and, and whatnot. Star. He's a native. Of, yeah, it's it's it was wacko, but He Man, He Man is sword and sorcery plus science fiction. Yeah, and, and it and it keeps coming back. I mean, Kevin Smith's next part just dropped on Netflix. Not bad. Wait, this, what this is part. it? He Man and the Masters of the Universe. There's a oh, I didn't know they were doing it, that on Netflix. Yeah, so Revelations, tough Revelation watch. Was... The first half disappointment. Second half, actually, I almost, I'm almost done. I finished the last, the first four episodes. I got one episode left. I'm actually kind of intrigued by it. It got um, better. It got better, and, and then Revolution, I'm interested in. So I've, I've yeah. heard people are like interested in Revolution. They're like, oh, this isn't bad anymore. They, so. They... They listened, I think, to a little bit of the complaints. And while Kevin Smith was initially butthurt against the initial backlash, I think they made some tweaks because it definitely seemed like they were giving a little bit more love. And when and when you have literally William Shatner and and Mark Hamill on the same cast where they actually talk to each other, it's right. mind blowing. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not to mention the fact that Shatner is like ninety three years old. Jesus. Yeah, I know. Oh, I saw bad. him last summer speaking at Boston Fan Expo. He's up there walking, no help. He's talking, doesn't need like cue cards or whatever. Still sounds good. God, what's it's the ridiculous. secret? What's the secret? Canadian. Canadian, he doesn't drink. Oh, well, maybe I should so put that's, that that's down. Shatner's, that's Shatner's. Oh, no. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's. Clean living plus poutine. Uh, plus a lot of money. A <laughs> lot of money helps. <laughs> I mean, oh. when, when, you're a, when you're an international icon, you can have a billionaire fly you to space just to right. say he was, you took, you took yeah. Captain Kirk to actually. And Shatner. then when you, then when you get back, you can go, I, I just didn't like it. I don't think, it, I, I regret doing it. <laughs> He ruined it. He ruined it for me. <laughs> well, I, that's because ruined I think it. he realized, okay, maybe I do need to just die because yeah. I can't really top this in my life. He's like, what am I going to do? Another reality show? Dude, the dude investigates the paranormal now. He doesn't do stars. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but I guess you can do that forever because you never find anything. Game. You're never going to find any of that. Bigfoot, he loves that stuff. Dude, he's got like a catalog of fifteen years of those shows. It's awesome. Like, well, if I, he's I not doing this. another documentary of behind the scenes of Star Trek, this is what no. he's doing. Yeah, exactly. And and by the way, those documentaries were awesome. So <laughs> oh, yeah. he loved he loved where he 
came from. And he is actually pissed at Paramount for how they they're treating Kirk at this point because they don't they don't like Kirk. But that's another issue for another day. So it's another issue. Kirk. Huh? Not oh, an issue got... I know about. I wanted to be. I wanted to be. Well, I wanted to be. Picard. Who wouldn't want to be an inter an intergalactic space pimp driving I around don't... in a in a giant tactical hot rod? You know, I don't want Orion Chlamydia. With torpedoes. <laughs> yeah. I would. I'd rather not have Orion Chlamydia. And even hey. though it's there, he's got one, he's got the galaxy's <laughs> best doctor. He's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who doesn't? And he's got you know... Spock. Guys, can you can you indulge me for just a moment while I find one other soundbite? Oh. Just just one other. No. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I'd like to pass. <laughs> hold on. Just, hold on. You said this if we was don't, he'll just it, it'll just stick on this for like 20 minutes if we don't allow him to do it. it I think it's just best. <laughs> here Kinda we go. Like here Randy Quaid said in Christmas Vacation, it's best to just let him finish. <laughs> let him finish. <laughs> let him finish. Hold on. Think is it this one? Oh, maybe. Shit. Hold on. Huh. Okay, Mister. Hey, uh, Mister Dead Air. We, there is. We, we okay over here? Ah, <laughs> uh, talking about Star Trek before. <laughs> I was watching some of the old episodes. William Shatton is the worst actor. Man. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> I <laughs> can't believe stuck here. Uh, then, <laughs> Spock Bones, <laughs> you're a beautiful woman. It sounds more like Donald Trump. We're getting Trump. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done with Lieutenant o Ura? <laughs> if you continue this, we're human. We will cease to exist. Keep going. Hold on. How does he drunk in Kirk in a bar? <laughs> Can you imagine? Look at the cans on her. <laughs> All eight of them. <laughs> Doc, you have to hook me up. That bitch from Rigel 7 gave me some Bufoli in class. <laughs> Earth's when I... <laughs> uh, Captain this? Kirk got more pussy in space than anyone now. Yeah, you, you <laughs> figure, these, you're right here on Earth, right people dying space. of AIDS and stuff. This is one planet. Oh. <laughs> He's out there spanning the universe, getting any kind of queef he can. <laughs> Bones, help me. Damn it, Jim, if, if, stop if, screwing if, green women, <laughs> and you wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> you, you, you just need to, if you're going to do a Shatner impersonation, you got to do Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta search for Pollock. You don't have to search for Pollock. I'm just saying, if you're gonna pull out a Shatner impersonation, you gotta do Pollock, not these. I was two talking clowns. about these guys who keep that... getting fired from every job they've ever had. Yeah, for good reason, which was awesome. So <laughs> hey, he knew his audience. <laughs> they knew their audience. I think we're coming up <laughs> on our end here. <laughs> because we're pulling oh, up do Kevin, you now. Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> Opie and Anthony uh, posts now. So oh. from 1998. So. <laughs> oh, Surprised you didn't get booed off the airways from 1998 for doing Star Trek. I know, right? But that, that goes to show the power of Star Trek, which I thought was not that strong. But now we know. Now we know. The horse so. is strong with Pretty Star strong. Trek. <laughs> All right, so on that note, everybody, thank you for joining us tonight. I am P.S. McKay. We are those sci-fi guys. Please join us next time. Oh, shoot. What is it? It's out there. No, but it was, you guys keep dreaming. We'll keep working. From our house to your house, Broham Gaming, thank you very much. It's thank out you for there. having me. That was a great time, guys. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> And I'm DT Cavman. And bro, you're welcome to join me anytime on the hike. Sounds good. Those Sci Fi Guys, this is an independent broadcast by Alpha Psych Productions, produced by DT Cavman and PS McKay. Music courtesy of Camtasia. For more information on upcoming episodes, follow P.S. McKay on Twitter at P.S. McKay 
or go to those sci-fi guys.com for past information of episodes. Thank you.